In their off-duty hours, the men did what they could to amuse themselves with the recreational opportunities at hand. Bronco busting was one favorite pastime. By this time, Mucklup was almost full grown. Living in the work camp was pretty much a do-it-yourself operation. Everything took longer and time was always short. Since our crews were working around the clock, if a problem came up that couldn't wait, we tried to resolve it immediately. By early July, most of the heavy construction work on the tunnels was completed. Throughout this operation, it was a steady stream of heavy swings moving back and forth across the ice, more than any other single factor that made it possible for us to complete Camp Century on schedule. 25,000 gallons of diesel fuel, 110 tons, an all-time record sled load. The continuous flow of tractor trains bringing in enormous cargoes were like the dependable tortoise, slow but steady. But they were our lifeline. To service our many vehicles, a maintenance shop was constructed closer to the surface, both as a repair shop and as a garage. Where the sub-zero temperatures meant equipment had to be kept warm. Otherwise, engines wouldn't start, lubricating oil solidified, and electrical connections froze. It was at this time that the Marine Fiddler arrived at Thule with the nuclear power plant. Designed for air transportability, but transported by sea to reduce costs, the nuclear plant was the last major phase of our operation and the most difficult. This unit, for example, part of a vapor container, weighed more than 21 tons. Awkward to handle and with high centers of gravity, these packages were delivered to the ice cap over a road built specifically for their transport. More than 400 tons of piping and machinery arrived in this one shipment. Since the Arctic cold makes metal very brittle, each unit had to be handled with great care. Even a routine impact could cause metal to crack or break. Both Colonel Kirkering and the swing commander checked the loading. The vapor container, the largest single item in the power plant, was carried on a special flat bottom sled built expressly for its transport. Everything seemed fine the morning the heavy swing moved out. But unfortunately, it was only a few hours later that one of the worst storms of the season blew up. To complete preparations to receive the nuclear plant, my crews bundled up and kept on working. The opening in the roof of the main nuclear trench now had to be closed quickly for the trench began filling the snow. Despite the storm, the heavy swing was still moving. At our end, my crews kept working. It was the only way we could be ready. Out on the ice, the storm cleared a little, and notwithstanding the tremendous load and the weather, this swing made the trip in record time. Just as the swing arrived at the camp, the storm let up and tarred. Work began immediately unloading the shipment in preparation for its emplacement. Covers were removed, crates opened. None of the excitement affected Mucklock in the least. Boxes of piping and wiring, each item carefully labeled, were opened so that each unit would be available when needed. Major components shipped in pieces because of weight limitations were reassembled before being moved into the ditches.
The condenser, 15 tons of steel, was one of the first units to be moved into the tunnel prepared to house it. When the condenser was slowly wedged forward, small track rollers supported its entire weight. Next, still mounted on its special sled, the vapor container was eased down the ramp by three tractors, one in front pulling and two in back to keep it from slipping. To bear the weight of the vapor container, the reactor building was constructed around a framework of steel beams. The floor was of heavy planking mounted on other steel beams. We had to use hand rigging methods, the best we could do under the confined conditions, to put the nuclear equipment in place. Every step had to be checked very carefully since the power plant had been pre-fitted in the United States and must be emplaced within a tolerance of one-eighth of an inch. <laughs> 